Hey folks, Zuski Films here. Today I'm doing another video on how to remove the battery and the starter motor from my 2016 R1200 GS Adventure. Now the only reason I'm making this video is because I'm working on another video on how to drain, bleed, and refill the clutch fluid. And in that video I need to remove the starter motor in order to have access to the clutch bleeder screw. So I decided to break out just the process of removing the battery and the starter motor into its own video. Now don't forget to check out my channel. I have a playlist set up just for the R1200GS, which has lots of other how-to videos. Also, check out the description below for all of the details on the tools, parts, part numbers of everything you see in this video, as well as chapter markings in case you want to jump to a specific section in this video. All right, and finally, a special thanks to our latest sponsor, Gerard Hugimstra from the Netherlands. Thank you for your donation. It certainly helps in producing these videos. Thanks again, Gerard. All right, let's get started. All right, the tools you'll need are a socket wrench, 10 millimeter socket, a universal joint for the socket, Torx T25 and T30 bit, small screwdriver, a short 10 millimeter wrench, torque wrench, wire cutter, wire tie magnetic pick. You also need some white grease for the starter motor neck. First thing we need to do is remove the battery cover using the Torx T25 bit. The battery cover has two plastic fingers that go into rubber grommets on the frame. Next we want to remove the negative side of the battery using a 10 millimeter socket. Move the wires away from the battery. Next remove the battery strap. And then the plastic battery holder. This piece also has two plastic fingers that slide into the battery box. Now carefully slide out the battery. There is a hard foam base that sits under the battery. Now remove the positive side of the battery, also using a 10 millimeter socket. Be careful not to touch the negative side of the battery with the socket wrench. Now it's time to remove the oxygen sensor connectors. Now remove the exhaust flow control valve servo connector. Now we're going to remove the servo mounting screw using a Torx T30 bit. Slide the servo out to the left. It also has two plastic fingers that need to slide out of rubber grommets. The servo is still connected to the exhaust flow control so it won't come out completely. Now we have to remove the negative wire to the starter motor using a Torx T30 bit. Now we want to remove the positive wire to the starter motor, but first we have to remove this plastic cover that protects the terminal. This plastic cover has two clips that hold it in place. Here's a better look of where those two clips are. Now we can remove the positive wire to the starter motor using a 10 millimeter wrench. There isn't a lot of room here so I had to use a short wrench.
Next we have to remove the two bolts holding the starter motor in. We'll start with the upper bolt first. You'll need a Torx T30 bit to remove this bolt. There isn't enough room to get a socket wrench in here, so I had to use a long socket extension. Once the bolt came out about halfway, there wasn't enough room to come straight at the bolt, so I had to use a smaller Torx bit on an angle to get it all the way out. And then use the magnet to get it all the way out. Now remove the lower starter bolt using the same Torx T30 bit. Now cut the wire tie at the upper bolt part of the starter. Now you can remove the starter motor from the engine block. The starter motor fits tightly so you'll have to slide it straight out. There are two sensor wires that are blocking it from coming out, so you'll have to slide those wires to the inside of the motor. There's still something that's preventing it from coming out. This is where those two wires need to slide around. And here's a closer look at those two wires. I noticed there was some wear on this bolt bracket. I then realized that this bracket that holds the exhaust in the servo was preventing the starter motor from coming out as well. You can remove the two bolts that hold in that bracket and then slide the bracket to the left to allow the starter to come out. Inspect the o-ring on the starter and replace if needed. Now we're going to clean off the old white grease that was on the starter neck. Then lubricate the O-ring with some fresh engine oil. Also put some new white grease onto the starter neck. Now we're going to clean up the opening where the starter motor fits. Now we can reinstall the starter motor. Again, this would probably be easier if you get the servo and exhaust bracket out of the way.
Be sure to get those two sensor wires on the outside of the motor. Now we can bolt the starter motor back in. We'll start with the upper bolt first. The only way I was able to get this bolt back in is by gluing the bolt to the Torx bit. And you'll need a Torx T30 bit to do this. We're going to screw it in a few turns just to get it started. Now we'll screw in the lower bolt. And we'll need a Torx T30 bit for this one as well. Screw the lower bolt all the way in, and then we'll go back to the upper bolt and screw that all the way in. Now torque down both bolts to 12 newton meters. Now fish back in a wire tie to tie down those wires to the starter motor. Now screw back in the negative wire to the starter motor. You'll need a Torx T30 bit for this and then torque down that bolt to 10 newton meters. Reconnect the positive wire to the starter motor. Tighten down the nut with a 10 millimeter wrench. and reinstall the terminal cover. Mount the servo back onto the bracket. Reinstall the servo mount screw and tighten down using a Torx T30 bit. And you'll want to torque this bolt to 10 newton meters. Now reconnect the oxygen sensor connectors. And the servo connector. And now we can reinstall the battery. We'll reconnect the positive wire to the battery first. Tighten down using a 10 millimeter socket. And torque to seven newton meters. Slide the battery back in and don't forget the foam base. Reconnect the black negative wires to the negative side of the battery. Tighten down using a 10 millimeter socket and torque to 7 newton meters. Now we'll install the battery holder. 
Make sure the two plastic fingers slide down into the battery box. Now we can reattach the rubber battery strap. And now we can reattach the battery cover. You'll need a Torx T25 bit for the battery cover screw. And torque to 2 newton meters. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel so you can be the first kid on your block to be notified when I release a new video. Thanks again and ride safe.